We're in a really remarkable building in Venice. Shuli, can you tell us about this space? Uh, the space is uh, uh, Pazzallo uh, del Prigioni. It actually was built uh, in conjunction with the, the prison du Car, which is next door, which is now a museum that people do visit. Um, but this prison is actually connected to the, the main prison, and also there is a kind of, they hold the court uh, here before get to send into the prison cells. The Taiwan Pavilion has been holding their biennial exhibition in this place uh, for, uh, I think this is the uh, 18th edition. So it's been sometimes, yes. So you knew this space before? You yes, I do know this space. Uh, however, I did not uh, particularly think uh, the significance of it being such a prison. And when I was start doing the research, also find out that it actually is a prison cell that house uh, Giovanni, uh, uh, Giovanni Casanova. So it was quite a, a connection to start thinking about uh, Casanova, how he was in prison at the time, and the connection sort of between the sex and prison, and particularly uh, sexual dissidents there are. It's played prison. really beautifully this structure into the the themes of gender politics and yes, um, the way you've used each of these rooms is quite extraordinary. Can you take us through? Yes, um, in this particular space, uh, right from the beginning to conceptualize the exhibition, I really want to make the four spaces kind of interconnected. So a matter is to create a narrative that you can take the viewers or walking through and feel the sort of uh, sense in the whole space. Of course, it also is haunted with history uh, that way. Uh, so in the gallery A, you see a, a projection tower, we call it. Uh, it's sort of an inverted uh, panopticon. Uh, so if we think about the panopticon prison of um, Bentham, when he designed it as a kind of all-around surveillance uh, panopticon, uh, in this particular structure in the gallery A, we change it to 10 projectors, which also turn around uh, in a way to project a more positive image or more uh, different kind of image rather than survey. You know. uh, so uh, basically, uh, maybe I backtrack myself a bit. In the beginning, I think I want to work with the prison and uh, because of Casanova, so I want to work about uh, prison and uh, particularly prison that uh, in prison incarcerated uh, what we call the sexual dissidents. Uh, and sort of because of gender or sexual uh, behavior <laughs> uh, that got imprisoned. So uh, right from the beginning, that's the become the theme. Uh, so with the four gallery space, so in the first gallery, gallery A, again, we make an introduction to 10 cases, 10 of these uh, sexual dissident cases. We uh, done a lot of research and we chosen to do the portrait and by the time you walk into gallery B and C, which are connected, you get to kind of watch each uh, case, which is portrayed, each case is portrayed by a performer. And uh, it's, each film is uh, 10 minutes long. <laughs> Everything is 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then from gallery B and C, you can kind of walk out and pass gallery A, then you enter into gallery D, which I call it the cube. And the cube actually contains all the, uh, pretty much all the electronic equipment that is the operating the surveillance system. So that kind of take you around a uh, full circle, yeah. As a, as a piece of very sort of interactive work, it's, it's wonderfully, it's very generous in how it allows you to move around the space. You don't have to get too involved in the technology, but the storylines are very apparent and the building sort of enhances that feeling of confinement and constraint. Um, how did you select the different cases and, and the, the actors that portray them? Yes, uh, the 10 cases, uh, the easy one, of course, we started with Casanova. And from Casanova, we thought about the more classic case, uh, uh, Michel Foucault. Actually, this is probably not that many people know. Uh, he was actually in prison in Poland for a year, maybe 
longer or shorter, but you know, pretty much in the 1950s, he was uh, kind of trapped and uh, sort of. Uh, we, we read some of the document from Poland and how he was actually kind of uh, seduced by a homosexual. The homosexual signed a contract with the government to track him. Uh, to reveal that he's homosexual and they imprison him while he has a position uh, in the French center in Poland, in Warsaw at the time. Uh, of course, we have uh, Marquis de Sartre, uh, I think is most representative of the uh, amazing, that he was actually in prison for 32 years all his life and consider how the 120 days of Sadome later would be considered a masterpiece, uh, either being discovered uh, from a dildo uh, that he hid <laughs> in the Bastille prison cell, actually. So these are the three sort of we consider classical case that we definitely have to have them. Then the seven cases become, we really want to find the contemporary cases. Uh, and also, right from the beginning, wanted to be more global, so it's not like particular one country, and uh, which actually take a bit of time. We do have some legal consultant, uh, gender legal consultant. Uh, we have different researchers that kind of help us a bit to, you know, hinting us. Uh, I have uh, also uh, lawyers, and uh, uh, one particular case is from Taiwan. It's about a gay guy who actually does uh, sort of chem, chem sex and uh, was HIV positive without revealing that he's HIV po uh, status. A lot of these cases, I must say, it's not really a single case. Or singly we say, oh, this particular case uh, with a gay man doesn't reveal his HIV status and uh, having sex. The, it's actually uh, many, many cases like this. So we decide to call every case or every persona with an X, meaning multiple. So you can say Casanova X, or uh, in this case, uh, the, the gay guy case is called 00X because that's what the 00 is actually in the court document. He was referred to as 00. <laughs> So each case actually done quite a lot of research. I was also able to get hold of many court documents for different cases, like uh, uh, there's a case from the German uh, Connie Ball case, and uh, a case of the a case in, happened just last year in France uh, that involved a very famous uh, Muslim uh, scholar being accused of the sexual assault. Uh, so that's quite a few uh, cases a uh, different way. Um, it's a very global selection. Exactly, definitely. exactly, yeah. And what's interesting is then the, the characters are introduced and then it segues into the, the bodies being sort of scanned and we, yes. we go into a whole interesting theme of surveillance. Yes. Uh, to to emphasise that, I also have two surveillance camera uh, 3D uh, scanning machine actually uh, set in the hallway in the staircase. So actually, uh, by the time the audience came in, you actually would pass. And of course, we we have a disclaimer uh, in the staircase. In the first staircase, say that you agree to be filmed to be modified, uh, and we also publish an up uh, three by three by six up, and uh, this up allow people to upload selfie. Uh, dance video, and this is uh, actually in solidarity with a case in Iran that concerning this young girl who, uh, who was caught by the authority for posting a dance uh, video on the Instagram. And so uh, these, uh, the surveillance camera and the app, I consider them as a kind of uh, public participation and also a, a sort of intervention uh, into the surveillance system. So whenever that uh, you see these video appear, uh, the projectors also start turning. So it's almost like they cannot be confined uh, in the screen itself. You know, while the, the ten portrait introduction or the ten character are uh, fits on the screen itself. Yeah. But there's a lovely moment, uh, or a very profound moment, when the dancing videos, which I'm always struck by how fresh and happy these people look, yes. and they're in this exhibition that is very much about confinement and oppression and surveillance, which is quite an interesting moment. And then they move, they're kind of squeezed off the screen and onto yes. the walls, which yes. 
again makes you think of confinement but then makes yes. you aware of how present and universal yes. these issues are. Yes, I think this is one thing I was very happy with all the dance videos sent in. You know. uh, if you go check the app, we do put the animation that was shown here, uh, so it's like a kind of full body and uh, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. It, it, uh, I was really happy with the video got sent in, you know, people really take time. Uh, to do it and take it as a serious full body and uh, you know that we do have this uh, movement tracking so each uh, each later when you see all the movement tracking and then turn into the line and turn into an avatar you know again it's like sort of it's a lot you know I think it's a lot about like a sort of a remark about the facial recognition you know uh, the way that we live in a society, that surveillance camera is everywhere. We live in a society, the, the data is our biggest uh, own prison. Uh, so I call it the, we live in the data pan panopticon today, in a way. Yeah. But the mood, um, strangely, although the, the situation is oppressive, um, because of these um, individual people who have submitted their rather joyful videos, you sort of get that thread of um, human adaptability or gullibility. It's it's very rich. It's yes. a really rich kind yes, of emotional yeah. experience. Thank you. Even for the video, you know, I think the ten portrait, uh, the way I wrote the script, and actually Paul B. Preciado at the end, we kind of consider we we co-write the script together. We done a lot of research together. Uh, as a curator, he he will be young uh, as a curator. But then you know it's uh, it's a kind of subject matter. He's also himself very interested in. So we were really consulting uh, each other about uh, different story we want to take. And uh, at the end, uh, when I was putting the script together, uh, you know the idea I call them transpunk fiction. Uh, in a way, it's not to. Uh, one of the thing, because I do also, you know, sort of work related to sex, and I want to really uh, have this uh, pleasure of sex. You know, the pleasure of that. You know, not deny the rights of sex even in the prison. I think this is actually a, a bigger issue uh, uh, in terms of the visitor rights and uh, um, that kind of thing. So, uh, in a way. I really want to, uh, in a way, certain way, like encourage this kind of sexual fantasy, uh, sort of almost science fiction way of portraying the pleasure of it. Yeah. There's more of that in the second gallery, isn't there? Yes, that's really all of them in the uh, B, the gallery B and C, the connected, the two gallery connected. So within the ten portrait or ten cases, ten films, uh, you kind of experience there some serious. Uh, reading or the law document, court document, there's also a really kind of fantastic uh, sort of imagery that, you know, sometimes portraying sex and or sometimes just uh, really quite, uh, um, yeah, I think it's more of the beautiful imagery and uh, try to make it more positive energy. Uh, of course, uh, you ask about the, the casting. I have to say, right from the beginning, um, there are some performers I know already. The film is shot, uh, tot was totally shot in Berlin, uh, where I have a producer that I work with, and there's a community of queer performers. I also quite familiar with their work. So, uh, right from the beginning, I sort of know that I want uh, Liz Rosenfeld to. Uh, to play Sad and uh, this uh, Enrico uh, who played Casanova is a dancer and I saw some of his work and uh, you know uh, I really want to cast him uh, somehow and so become he played Casanova. So there's a lot of these uh, um, sort of not thinking uh, or like kind of you know trans uh, boundary or the sexual uh, or the gender and race in a way, uh, not to cast uh, the typical casting of the uh, assemble, you know, resemble the historic character or the, or the contemporary case is the same. Uh, really try to go beyond that a bit to uh, do a more sort of uh, close race and uh, gender casting. Uh, the same in the film, you actually did see a lot of uh, 
a trans encounter, you know, uh, like Foucault would be visiting Rx or uh, Casanova visiting 00X, uh, exchange a condom. <laughs> uh, this kind of moment is very precious. For there me are too. lots of dramatic sub narratives as well, aren't yes. there? Yeah. yeah. You've been a pioneer in using technology in your art, um, and it strikes me that having been working in all kinds of technology since the 90s, there's a, there's a clarity about your work now where often you go into exhibitions and it's all about the technology and they're trying to make it as, they're trying to control your experience mm -hmm. and there's something so much more powerful about allowing the technology to be one of many elements including sculpture and the human imagination being the most powerful element of all. You seem to release that with this work particularly yes. cleverly. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, one of the things uh, uh, is about uh, imagine the sort of uh, film gender queer community. It's actually a lot of these work is, have never involved the technology uh, or the technology is never portraying these kind of subject matter. Uh, so I'm always feeling like I'm really always uh, crossing all these different fields, you know. I, I'm doing the media art and uh, I'm also making film or sexy films and uh, one of the things, I think it's really true not until uh, a certain time that I, I start feeling that I can, you know, use the technology to even better to uh, involve this community. So uh, it becomes quite a, a distinctive uh, character in my work in terms of uh, I, if I do a film with sex, uh, I always have a lot of uh, 3D effects and actually for me it's a, a very important element in the film. Yeah.